friends, it's Jasmine, and I hope that you all are doing well. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm a witchy content creator here on YouTube, so if you're into witchcraft, paganism, folklore, or just hearing my own experiences, uh, check out my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. It's good to see you, and let's get into the video. So I definitely want to give a big shout out to all of my supporters here on the channel, as well as a special shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon. Really pushing me and motivating me and keeping me inspired and plugged into making this sort of content. I definitely couldn't do what I do without you guys and I wanted to take this time to just say thank you. Last year, um, around the winter solstice, I had planned to do a special event, a special ritual here on YouTube um, to kind of say thank you for those of you who follow and subscribe uh, to my Patreon and that event got pushed into January due to some other reasons. Um, and we did our own kind of Yalba's night. I did a live here on my channel. I had some friends with me. We read some poems from Hafiz. We lit our uh, candles and it was a really nice ritual and I really enjoyed doing that with you all. And I'm kind of thinking about doing something for the springtime. The spring equinox is quickly approaching, though it might kind of feel hard to believe if you live in the Midwest where I live. We just got our largest snow um, of the season so far. So that's kind of one thing about the wheel of the year. If you follow the wheel of the year, that may be kind of tricky sometimes. It's kind of like connecting with this seasonal calendar um, that depending on where you live, the seasons may or may not match. And where I live in the Midwest part of the United States, the seasons are just slightly skewed a little bit. Um, however, I definitely can feel the earth kind of moving beneath my feet, if that makes sense. And before you know it, here in maybe five or six more weeks, it is going to be spring. So like I said, it feels kind of weird now because I'm looking out my window and we have all this snow, but I'm holding on to the promise of spring, the hope and the renewal of the equinox that is approaching the vernal equinox. And with that, I keep kind of catching myself daydreaming about returning to the wood and being back out in nature, in the natural landscape, doing magic. And that's not to say that I don't absolutely love doing magic here in my hearth, here in my home. You know, I have a couple different altars. I have a working altar. I have my home and hearth slash money altar. I have my sabbatical altar. I have shrines and they all are sacred and wonderful, but there is something special and something different about being able to weave magic when you are actually outside in a safe and secured space where you feel comfortable and weaving magic amongst the trees. Like as cheesy as that might sound, and maybe it's because I'm a Midwestern witch, maybe it's because we live in what's called Little Appalachia, but there's something primal that kind of awakens within me. And don't get me wrong, I definitely love the dark half of the year and I love, you know, shifting through those seasons and those sabbats. Um, I was born actually damn near a Maybon baby, damn near a fall equinox baby. So of course I love that whole season, but there's something special about the light half of the year. And spring for me tends to be ugly and messy and gross. And it's where a lot of healing for me takes place due to some of my anniversaries of some various things that I've talked about here before on the channel. I think I talked about it in my Wolf Moon Shadow Work uh, January video. But it's not an easy time for me. And I know that for some people spring is pastels and baby chicks and Easter eggs and little bunnies and flowers. And I believe that is a part of spring. That just is not a part of spring that I have experienced. For me, spring 
with the theme of rebirth or birth tends to be just that. It's ugly, it's messy, it's gross, it's blood curdling screams, it's crying out, it's anguish, it's pain. It is this process of rebirth that has never been pastel for me. And that's not at all to say that if spring is pastel for you, that there's anything wrong with that. But for people like me, I often feel sometimes not ostracized, but othered in a way because I don't connect to the same current of spring that some other witches connect to. And logically, I know that it doesn't really matter, right? Like my practice my path as my own and comparing or contrasting your experience, your practice is, in my opinion, one of the most harmful things a witch can do to themselves is by looking at other witches and wishing or comparing that they have this or they have that. But I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't do that too. Today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit more about tree wards. Earlier, I've already made and posted a video talking about kind of some of the historical aspects of tree wards and my own personal gnosis in regards to tree wards. But while I'm kind of daydreaming about returning to the wood, um, this has been something that's kind of been on my mind lately. And I wanted to explore this a little bit further and I wanted to enhance my personal practice using tree wards and really solidify them more so in my practice because they are something that I find to be very, very useful, um, especially if you consider yourself, you know, I know that labels are labels and whatever, but like with hedgecraft or astral work or astral witches, whatever these labels, if you so choose to use them, I find them to be very beneficial because they are a great aid in visualization. And tree wards are a way to access a place and it's kind of almost like a spiritual portal. And there are many different ways to create these sorts of portals. And tree wards are definitely one of these ways. And it's a way that I am most familiar with. And it's a way, the method that is directly connected to the earth itself. So if you haven't seen my previous tree ward video, I would highly recommend that you check that out after this video to kind of familiarize yourself with where I'm coming from when it comes to tree wards, because in this video, I'm not really gonna spend a lot of time talking about the history of it, or things like that. So I wanted to show you this awesome tree ward. One of my coven mates uh, came over the other day and was helping me with some stuff here around the house. And I had mentioned that I really wanted to make a special tree ward because in the past when I've made tree wards, I've mostly just used natural materials. So um, this is the tree ward that my coven mate made that I am going to be doing a ritual with. And I will show you that in this video later. But this is the tree ward. So in the past, when I have made tree wards or when I have helped instruct other people making tree wards, typically, you know, we go out into the woods um, and there are a couple special places where myself as a solitary practitioner or me with the coven will go out into these woods that aren't too far from where I live. And we hold rituals there, we practice magic there, and it's a very special sacred thing. And some of that is a little bit fourth power, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. But when it comes to these tree wards, you know, this is something that I find to be very beneficial, especially when it comes to, you know, being here at home, but wanting to return to the wood, especially in those darker months where maybe parts of the woodland might not not be as accessible as they would be during the lighter half of the year. Tree wards can also serve as protective talismans to help ward and guard a ritual space as well as portals for witches to travel or fly through. Now, this is kind of a notion that is found within Hedgecraft. I haven't seen specifically tree wards associated specifically with the practice of Hedgecraft, but so that's something that I kind of associate it with because Hedgecraft really is you know, the art and the practice of crossing the hedge. It's about astral traveling. It's about pulling your spirit from your flesh vessel and sending it out into the aether for various reasons, whether it's to communicate with spirits, deities, ancestors, or just practicing magic as your astral self 
Um, you don't even have to have a physical place to do magic at. You can send your spirit from your body and you could be doing an entire ritual in the astral as well. And tree wards are a great way to do that. So like I said, in the past, I had just used natural materials. So these are fallen branches that I have gotten permission from, from the wood spirits, if you will, to take. Um, so these branches I did not cut. They were already fallen naturally from the tree. And then this is just some biodegradable kind of like hemp rope. And normally they'll be tied in kind of a triangular shape such as this. Um, but you could definitely do different shapes if you wanted to. You could get fancy if you wanted to. Um, you could make alchemile symbols. We've done that before as well. Um, like I've talked about the language of tree wards too in my previous video, so you can check that out as well. But this time, I really enjoy that my coven mate kind of adorned it with some extra special things. Like there are chunks of wax here from previous spells because I do save my candle wax after my spell work. And there are hemp, you know, pieces that dangle and wooden beads. And I really feel like this kind of adds to the magic and the mysticism of the tree ward. And in my opinion, it just makes it that much more sacred. So later tonight, I'm going to be doing a ritual using this tree ward to consecrate it and bless it and charge it with the powers of flight, as in crossing the hedge, astral travel, but also too, I want to consecrate it for protection as well, to keep our ritual safe, or, or, to keep our ritual safe, to keep our ritual space safe from prying eyes or intruders, be it in the physical or the astral. That's something that's important to me. So I just wanted to show you this tree ward and I will show you also a little clip of my coven mate actually making this. All right, you guys, so this is actually my first time that I am using my brand new gooseneck um, phone mount. So if the camera gets a little shaky, it's because it's attached to this little altar table that I'm working on. Um, but I wanted to show you a little bit of this ritual that I'm going to be doing to kind of charge, bless and consecrate this uh, tree ward, which I talked about earlier in the day before I went to work. Now I'm home from work and it is the night of the full Leo moon when I am doing this. So I'm going to be using sort of the energy of that uh, moon and putting that into this tree ward as well as kind of uh, bringing it through the three realms, if you will. So in terms of the upper world, the mid world and the underworld, um, these are kind of known as the concept of the other worlds, which I familiarized myself with uh, through Keldon's book, Traditional Witchcraft. Now, tree wards are something that I've been making for years and I, as I mentioned earlier, have a whole other video kind of talking about the ins and outs of tree wards. And I know I talked about them a little bit more in this video. So this is just going to be the ritual portion of um, how I'm going to consecrate this tree ward that I just showed you earlier. Um, this tree ward was actually made by one of my coven mates. So I feel like by us working together on this tree ward, it's really kind of amplifying its power and in the past, I have just brought some hemp uh, with me out into the woods and I've made the tree ward and done a similar ritual um, while I'm in the woods. So this is my first time really 
blessing and working with a tree ward from, you know, sticks that I've brought from the woods into my home and made here at my house and doing the ritual here from my witchy room. So this is really the first time um, that I've done this particular method and I wanted to share this with you guys. So as you can see, I have my tree ward here. This plate is just like a silver kind of antique -y like plate that I picked up from a thrift store. These are really, really good to do spells on, um, especially whenever you're using like little chime candles like these. So here's what I'm going to be using for this ritual. Obviously we have the tree ward, right? Which I showed you earlier. So obviously we have the tree ward. I'm going to be using this spell spray that, um, I got from Spiritual Gardens. Jeanette actually made this for me. And this is a kind of custom blend that she made, La Sorceria. Um, and so I'm going to be spraying this all over the tree ward to kind of start. Um, to me, this spray is a spray that is a spray of the sorceress. And I am trying to imbue this with my own magic. And this blend was inspired by me. So I feel like this is kind of fitting to use for this working as this is a tree ward that I will be using and maybe other members of our coven will be using. I also have this ritual oil here called Coven. Um, I think it's pretty clear why I'm using this ritual oil. And I actually picked this up at Spirit Fest last year, and this is from Twisted Twigs. So shout out to Twisted Twigs. That's a local uh, metaphysical shop here in my state. And they had a booth there and I picked some of this up. So I will be using some of this as well. And then I'm also going to be using three chime candles here. I'm going to be using a violet chime candle, a gray chime candle, and a white chime candle. This violet chime candle I'm going to be using to represent the upper world. This gray chime candle I'm going to be using to represent the veil um, and specifically the mid world. And this white chime candle I'm going to be using to represent the underworld, the realm of the dead. So first I'm gonna start off with just kind of spraying my ritual space. I love this so much. I also have my coyote skull here. Coyotes are a animal that I connect with per the spirits of the land. They're definitely all around us here in the Midwest. So I have my coyote skull here that very much connects me to the land that I reside on. And then I also have this um, little gator baby skull here, which connects me more to ancestral spirits. And I also have this beautiful hippopotamus here, which I'm not going to go into the detail of this here in this video. I'm going to take my coven um, spell oil and I'm going to place this on the tree ward as well as anoint all three candles. Now I'm going to light like the bottom end of my chime and stick it to my spell plate. And to light all three of my spell chimes here. Some people would prefer to use matches. Um, that's totally fine. I'm just using a lighter here because that's what works for me. And witches always use what they have on hand. I 
I call upon the devil of the midnight Sabbath, the master of craft and cunning will, the man in black. I call upon the horned one, he who is the ruler of nature, the lord of tree and of beasts, he who incites the wild misrule. I call to you, O old one, bless this tree ward and grant me sight as I work my will this night. I call to you, O old one, O horned one, king of the forests and the beasts, eldritch lord of time and space, hallowed be thy name. I call upon you, bless this tree ward, grant me sight as I work your will this night. In your unholy name, bless this as a portal in time and in space. As I work your will this night, mother of darkness, infernal queen, unholy host of all things unseen, grant me power, wisdom, and might as I work your will this night in the upper world and the underworld, betwixt and between the mid-worlds. Daughter of the black flame, I call upon you now. Grant me visions in this ward. May this ward serve as a protection between prying eyes who look to spy. May this ward serve as a charging vessel for the ceremonial place it is left in. May this ward be blessed by the power of the mighty dead and our ancestors. May this ward serve as a powerful tool for divination and sorcery. May this ward serve as a portal for beneficial spirits to aid us in our work. In the power of the Dark Mother and the power of the Dark Lord, to the Witch Father and the Witch Mother, to the infernal queen and the devil himself. Bless this tree ward now. Grant me sight on this night. As it is, so it shall forever be. I'm gonna let these burn through. I'm going to use my ward and scry into the candle flames, visualizing the flames and the light of these candles coming into the middle of my tree ward here in the middle of the triangle and visualizing the flames filling the middle with light so that it will illuminate my way and the way of other witches to find it in the wood. familiar spirit of these lands. I ask that you lend your aid in this work. Keep us shrouded and protected in the darkness. We are the witches, allies of the spirits of the earth. Aid us now shepherd us through these vessels. I ask that you lend your familiar spirits to this work and that you help any wayward witches looking to find this unholy ground. Bless us now in this work if it is your will. Watch over this work of the birth of this tree ward and of so many more to come. Let this tree ward charge all others within its presence. Keep after these tree wards and tend to them. Keep them mended through wind and weather. 
as bad luck leaves and only good can gather. Do this for me, O spirits of the land, and I will be sure to lend you my hand of offerings for every rite and ritual facilitated on these lands. <laughs>